Welcome back. This is Kim Saeed of KimSaeed.com, helping you break free from narcissistic abuse with a mix of science and spirituality. If this sounds like something that would benefit your life, make sure you hit subscribe and click the little bell so YouTube will notify you when I publish new videos. I see so many folks getting hung up on whether someone is a true narcissist or not. They'll say, well, this person does this or they do that, but they don't meet all the criteria. So maybe they're just a jerk or maybe they're not really a narcissist. Hmm. I don't know if I should leave the relationship because I don't know if they're a narcissist or not. If this sounds like you, then you are in the right place because this is the issue that I'm going to be addressing in today's video. There are many reasons that you might want to leave a relationship and a person's narcissism is only one of them. So in today's video, we're going to cover five common reasons that you might consider leaving a relationship, whether someone is a narcissist or not. Number one is they are constantly pointing out things that they don't like about you. Oddly, these are likely the very things they loved about you in the beginning of your relationship. Narcissists groom their targets by claiming to love everything about them. The way they dress, their hairstyle, their interests, their taste in music, or maybe even their love of arts. Then shockingly, the things they once loved about you become the reasons they were forced to cheat, have lost interest, or have caused them to start a new relationship with someone else. The reason this manipulative tactic has such a profound effect on your self-esteem is that you have spent a good portion of your life developing your preferences, interests, personality, and personal style. Along the way, you became comfortable in your own skin. Then along came someone who appeared to love every little thing about you. In fact, it seemed like the two of you shared so many things in common. Then slowly, like dismantling a jigsaw puzzle, they began taking little parts of you away by claiming they were intolerable. Things that meant the most to you your family, your friends, your appearance, your relationship with your children, the love you have for your pets, your charity involvements, or maybe your violin lessons, until you didn't know who you were anymore. Narcissists strive to keep people small and well-disciplined. This will play out through criticizing everything about you so that you end up changing yourself to fit inside the small box they designed for you. True love doesn't take away the things that make up who you are. It doesn't diminish you. If you feel like you can't do anything right, that you couldn't possibly attract someone else, that you're too old, too needy, too sensitive to be in a relationship with anyone else, this is a sign that it's time to leave. Number two, they always lie. Most people don't want to be liars. Maybe a friend asks you about their new haircut or a new outfit they're really excited about and you don't want to hurt their feelings by giving them your opinion. This might be okay, especially that your taste in haircuts and fashion could vary wildly from your friends. However, when lies are used to cover up wrongdoing or as a means to cause you to doubt your own perception of reality, these lies are abusive. If lies are rampant in your relationship, then you're in the wrong one. Bottom line, you can never have a healthy relationship with a liar. Number three, they constantly cheat on you. There are many varied ideas and belief systems that revolve around fidelity and what is considered cheating. Some folks are into polyamory and so theoretically are open to open relationships. It may seem the lines are blurred when it comes to what constitutes cheating and abuse, but they're really not. 
Here are some common things to consider. Does your partner gaslight you about the cheating? Do they blame you for their choice to be unfaithful, citing your looks, your weight, or your preferences as reasons they are straying? Do they insult you and make you feel undesirable? Do they claim you're overreacting and that everyone cheats? Do they use cheating as a method of hurting you? Do they pressure you into doing things that you don't want to do and then cheat on you when you end up not doing them? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then yes, cheating is abusive in your situation. And even if you are trying out the polyamorous lifestyle, if your feelings are constantly hurt by something your partner is doing, then you may want to ask yourself if you're doing it because you're truly open to it or doing it to hang on to someone while abandoning yourself in the process. And by the way, one of the narcissist's favorite tricks is to pretend they have an addiction. They just can't help themselves and so they appeal to your good heart to stick with them through it all. All this accomplishes is you staying in a relationship where you will always be cheated on. I have been in this field for over 10 years now and I have never seen a cheating narcissist stop cheating. Number four, their words don't match their actions. Narcissists are absolute geniuses at telling you what you want to hear at just the right moment to keep you hooked in the relationship. Think back to the last time you caught them cheating or they suddenly materialized after disappearing off the face of the earth for two weeks. Regardless of the dialogue that played out, I would imagine they successfully rationalized and minimized their relationship crimes. In the moment, you may have even felt like you could sympathize with what they were saying. They promised they would try to do better, that they love only you, that the two of you belong together. And by the way, let's get engaged. They'll get that house the two of you looked at and they'll break it off with the new person. And you bought into it. Alternately, they may have come back saying they met someone new and now they can't decide between you or the other person. This is the initial step in their plan to triangulate between the two of you. This is precisely what they do to people who are over conscientious, which means willing to give the narcissist the benefit of the doubt, and who tend to over intellectualize, which means trying hard to empathize and believe the narcissist has some understandable reason to be hurtful. It also plays into the fairy tale you have in your mind about their finally having the epiphany and renouncing their awful behaviors for the sake of true love. Before you know it, you're accepting things you never thought you would in your relationship, vowing to stick by their side, and feeling like a fool because of it. That's because on a subconscious and intuitive level, you understand that the narcissist really doesn't have any plans to change. Number five, they make you choose between them or your own children. Narcissists are jealous of anything or anyone that takes your attention away from them, and your children are no exception. One of the most heartbreaking elements of narcissistic abuse is the disconnect that often happens between abuse victims and their children. There are few things that make the narcissist feel more powerful than having so much influence over you that you're willing to obey their commands and interact with your children according to what the narcissist deems fit. I've even seen parents kicking their older children out of the house because the narcissist said it was time for them to go. There are two common and unfortunate scenarios that typically play out when one is involved with a narcissist in regards to their children. First, Abuse victims are so consumed with the narcissist due to crippling self-esteem issues, trauma bonding, PTSD symptoms, they have little attention or energy to give to their children. Many times all they can do is clothe and feed them, but have very little capacity to truly be present with them. This often results in children feeling unseen, neglected, and unloved. 
Second, because parents who are targets of narcissistic abuse often develop such extreme levels of anxiety, depression, and hypersensitivity, they can become impatient with their children or find themselves resenting their children for behaving in ways that upset the narcissist. This leads to a further disconnect with the children feeling unloved and unworthy, which may lead to their developing either codependency or narcissism as they grow into adults. If either of these scenarios describe your relationship with your children, this is a screaming sign that it's time for you to leave the relationship. So it doesn't really matter if someone is a narcissist or not if these things are happening in your relationship. Emotional abuse and emotional unavailability are not issues you can fix by staying in a relationship with someone who doesn't care about you or your feelings. I hope this video helped make things more clear for you. Thank you so much for watching until the end. I always appreciate when you do that. And if you haven't done it yet, make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure to check down in the description box because I'll always include lots of helpful links for you down there. That's it for today and I'll see you in the next video.